Dan the Wheelman here in beautiful St. Andrews, New Brunswick. And with me today are a couple of very special guests, actually. This is the Ford Bronco Everglades Edition. Um, it's kind of like an overlanding from factory version of the Bronco. You've got the winch here comes as standard. You've got some special wheels and some other bits involved as well that we'll talk about a little bit later on. So that's the Everglades. But I'm also here, if you'll follow me, past this kind of standard Bronco here, although it still looks very cool, to the Bronco Raptor, 418 horsepower, 440 pound-feet of torque, 13 inches of ride height, big 37-inch off-road tires, and a whole other whack of cool stuff to make this the performance Bronco that you've always wanted. So we're going to take a drive in both of these today. We're going to do some off-roading, some rock crawling. We're going to maybe try the Baja mode in this beauty, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. So come along with me and let's take a drive. So of course, there's a lot to unpack when it comes to the styling of the Raptor. First of all, just look how wide this thing is. This thing is almost 10 inches wider than, than the standard Bronco, which is spectacular. You have the 37 inch off-road tires down here, plus uh, 17 inch wheels with the bead lock in there. You have exclusive to Raptor amber marker lights and DRLs as well as you can see there. Uh, this is a 13 inch ride height, which is plenty. And of course you've got the very kind of like, I don't know, lizard like or prehistoric kind of hood cover there for those kind of gills. You've got some on the side here as well. This color is called Eruption Green, not exclusive to the Raptor, although there is an exclusive orange to the Raptor. And you've got these new tail lights as well. That is also a Raptor exclusive. Add Haas suspension and Fox dampers and you have an off roading stars and all that specialness continues to the inside of the bronco raptor as well you have orange kind of trim on the goat mode wheel goes over any type of terrain you have matching orange stitching on the outside of the seats here on the steering wheel and that big bronco lettering on there they've done whatever they can do to make this unique from the inside and from the outside because after all when you look as crazy as you do on the outside the interior kind of has to match it and they've done a pretty good job doing that here and on top of all that, you also get a special gauge cluster style. This is the performance version. You see the tack right there in the middle, plus gives you your chassis information there as well. And uh, magnesium paddle shifters. You can see that right there. Very cool. And an extra large Ford performance steering wheel with centering band to just add a little more kind of specialness to the Raptor's interior. Uh, we're actually starting today in the Raptor. I've got my photography friend here too, yeah. so we got all sorts of cameras on this car. Uh, three, uh, 418 horsepower, I believe, and 440 pound-feet of torque from a three-liter V6 in the Raptor. That's the only engine you can get in this vehicle, which is fine by me because I love a good V6 and I love all that power. Over 400 torque, we're doing some off-roading, some water crossing, and all that kind of great stuff. The kind of stuff you do in a vehicle like this, the kind of stuff this vehicle is made for. So now we are doing some proper rock crawling in 
the Ford Bronco Raptor. I've got it in uh, 4L. I've got it in rock crawl mode. I don't have turn assist on right now as we get stuck. There we go. Look at it. Just pull right through those stones. No problem. That's so now we've done some rock crawling. Now we're going to do a some water fording in the Ford Raptor. Now the Everglades version is the more is the one that's better equipped for water fording actually believe it or not. It's got a snorkel on it and it has some other features as well to make it a little easier but we're driving through a pond here basically which is kind of cool and I have a feeling we're going to have very little trouble in this Raptor doing so as long as we follow the route properly. There we go. So this thing just claws through this water like an Olympic swimmer or a Tough Mudder champion. That's probably actually a better example. And yeah, it's again, like on the rock crawling, when you go through obstacles like this in this, in this truck, what's crazy about it is it doesn't feel that strange. You're just driving it like you drive any other SUV on a country road, but with these big wide tires, all that suspension travel, the disconnected sway bar, with all of that going on, it feels like a nice Sunday drive. Well, maybe a little more extreme than that, but pretty close, surprisingly close, considering, as you can see, the conditions we're on. Truly amazing stuff. And the other thing that's really cool, one of my favorite features to help with the off-roading, uh, that, as you'll see in the inset here, there's the camera looking down and ahead of me in the Raptor. So what that does, it's also got some lines that you, you see on there to show you where your tires are going. And what that does is it just lets you place the vehicle that much easier on off-road. What you're doing... Uh, hitch Baja mode and then make your exhaust as loud as possible. And a few of these stretches here can just uh, use some skinny pedal and have some fun. I don't know if you heard that, but I was told to make my car louder, so I'm going to go do that right now. Here we go. Exhaust on Baja mode. Let's have a listen. Oh, yes. Now I'm in a racing truck, and we're going for it in Baja mode in the Ford. Here, watch this splash. Here we go. Baja mode, water splash, loud exhaust. There you have it. That's what we're talking Look at this. Here we go. See if I can follow his lead here. Uh, hold on to your britches. Oh, yes, that is awesome. That is so much. What do you think about this? Yeah, that's what I thought. Look at that. I'm basically traversing a river, and it's no big thing. That is some of the most incredible stuff I've ever seen in a truck. When I was on the F-150 Rafter launch, the pickup truck, um, a couple years ago, we went on an abandoned bombing range. That was cool. Uh, we did some really fast driving through there, but this is equally cool almost because we're instead of going fast over like a desert floor we're going fast through water splashes and rocky dirt forestry roads actually this is a mining road which is cool in its own way just goes to show you how on, on the off-roading world just like in the you know on-road racetrack world there's so much variety and so much fun to be had if you have a vehicle properly equipped to do it and this raptor is most definitely that So as long as you know how to use all those systems, you're in really good shape in this Bronco Raptor and you are gonna have one whole heck of a lot of fun as you hear those trees just gently rubbing against the sides of this truck. This thing is 10 inches wider than uh, the standard Bronco, uh, even the Sasquatch, which you see ahead of me there. This Raptor is 10 inches wider than that thing to give you that much more stability and um, and control. So lots, lots to like if you're an off-roader when it comes to the Ford Bronco Raptor. So now this is the Everglades model of the Bronco. It's kind of like an overlander from the factory. That's why we've got this snorkel on here. You can see it very, very cool. It's a reversible snorkel. So this panel can actually be moved to the other side to keep stuff like sand and dust out, all that kind of stuff. And you're gonna need that snorkel because as this very cool graphic illustrates, this line here is, ab is directly above 36 inches above ground, which is how deep you're allowed to ford water in this Ford. You have black specialized wheels. They're not beadlock style. They look very cool. Heavy duty off-road tires. And the big news is you've got a 10,000 
thousand pound worn winch. That is a standard feature on the Evergreen. comes only as the four-door or five-door wagon version of the Bronco. You can get it as the two-door, and it comes with a 2.3-liter four-cylinder EcoBoost, good for 300 horsepower. So, oh. stepping inside the Everglades, not quite as, I guess, special in here as it is in the Raptor, which is no surprise. You don't have all the orange trimmings. You don't have all that kind of stuff, the special gauge cluster and so on. This is a standard gauge cluster in here. But there is some stuff to make it unique. For one, you've got these vinyl seats that are fully washable. That pairs with floorboards that actually have drainage holes in them, so you can and wash out those easily and up here there's no headliner on this frame on this um on the roof panels because again you want to be able to spray everything down but you can get a headliner if you want as well and other than that you've got the stuff that you've always loved from the bronco you've got the you've got the gopro mount up here so you can record your overlanding adventures you've got the grab handles 12 inch Ford sync display is standard. Um, window controls here in the middle, which is kind of weird, but that's where they are. And like I said before, you've got the standard Bronco gauge cluster and Bronco steering wheel as well. And of course, uh, you have the your various off-road controls up here, but you don't have the um, sway bar disconnect system in the Everglades, which is too bad because that's a really cool feature for off-roading, uh, but that isn't even an option here. But you do have a front locker, rear locker, and trail turn assist, which kind of makes your Bronco act a little bit like a tank in the way it turns by manipulating the brakes and the power delivery kind of rotates or pivots around itself to make turns around tighter corners pretty cool stuff so in the Everglades this is the overlanding version of the Bronco and to show you what it's all about we're going to take it over this land bridge between St. Andrews New Brunswick and Ministers Island New Brunswick you can see all of us going down here this was underwater five minutes ago and now it's completely wide open that is one of the coolest things I think I've ever done in a car as we cross the cross the ocean on a land bridge unbelievable like that idea of giving you a bit of an overlander right from the factory. There's some really cool bits on this car. It looks neat. The winch makes it look pretty serious, actually, which is kind of cool. Um, and you've got that four-cylinder engine. It's not as peppy as the Raptor, obviously, with its twin turbo V6, but it's got some get up and go. It is quite loud in here, though. As we mentioned before, there's no roof liner in here to keep the kind of washable interior theme going. So you can add one, though. They do offer that as an option, make it a lot quieter in the Bronx. Everglades but I don't know there's just there's just something neat and we have done a little bit of light off-roading in this Everglades as well it's still very capable in that regard you still have the different differential locking you still have 2h 4h and so on 4l you still have all that plus you've got the goat modes you know mud rods and all that you have all that you don't have the Baja mode like you do in a Raptor but then again nothing else really does in the Ford world so so no big deal but you still got all that kind of kind of going for you um but of course thing is i mean the raptor or sorry the bronco is already a very ostentatious looking thing so to really make it stand out from the rest of its peers its bronco peers i should say the everglade the raptor got a bunch of stuff to make it look really different with the widening of its track and all that kind of stuff the everything doesn't get that it's got those add-ons instead now of course those add-ons aren't the end of it i've got a bunch of auxiliary switches up here i can add all sorts of stuff spotlights and things like that you can add all that too just because you have the Everglades model doesn't mean you can't add some of the uh, aftermarket accessories that other Broncos are given as well. But this is a cool one for people who just, you know, the Raptor is a little bit too much. This is pretty close, I believe, on the Bronco price scale to the Raptor. But, you know, um, for people that want like a Bronco that's a little bit kind of a little more unique, but they like that idea, the simplicity of the basic vinyl seats and the washable interior and all that, the yeah, but, but outside you've got the cool stuff like the snorkel like the winch and so on and that extra and the extra large tires it's kind of a cool mix of like 
kind of a basic interior, but a pretty hardcore exterior. So if you're gonna go do some overlanding, I would say, and I'm no overlanding expert, but I would say that the Everglades is a good place to start. Yeah, not quite as fast as the Bronco when you really put your foot into it. You don't have the paddle shifters like the size of the Raptor that the Raptor does. You don't have that either, but you got a 10 speed automatic transmission, turbocharged four cylinder engine. It's more efficient. That's all good stuff too. And efficiency when you're doing longer drives, obviously that's important. So you've got that with the four cylinder. I would ask Ford, that's probably what they'd say. That's why they put the four cylinder in this overlanding spec Bronco because people want their fuel to last longer. Whereas in the Raptor, they don't care. They just want as much power as possible. Now, the one question I did ask as we come to a close here is why only the four door models for these two specs of the Bronco? The Everglades, I can understand. Overlanding vehicle, you're gonna to wanna to put a lot of stuff back there and having driven the two-door Bronco myself numerous times, there isn't a lot of storage room back there. So the over this one here, you're gonna to wanna to load it, you're gonna want all that kind of stuff, I understand. But the Bronco Raptor, when I first heard about it, I was like, it's gotta be the two-door, right? Well, apparently not, because it's only available as the four-door, and the reason for that is it's got a longer wheelbase, which makes it more stable when going off-road quickly, um, and it's the more it's the more usable body style in general. I mean, we still gotta sell those things. More people are buying four-door Broncos than two-doors, so if you're gonna make a special version, let's make the Raptor a four-door. And we're in a Ford. When they used to offer both a Super Crew and I guess a Crew Cab, or a King Cab, I guess it was, of the Raptor F-150, now it's only a Super Crew because more people were buying the Super Crew version of the Raptor F-150, so, if they're gonna be doing that, they would suspect more people are gonna end up buying the four-door version of the Bronco. So consider this like the Super Crew, or consider the four-door Raptor the Super Crew of the Bronco body style. And the last little tip that I found was that also the Bronco Raptor has a higher tow rating than other Broncos because of the way its um, exhaust is routed. Other Broncos have a, uh, a transversely mounted exhaust um, muffler at the back. You can't fit a hitch uh, as, as, as sturdy of a hitch there because of that exhaust uh, muffler. But here in the in the Raptor, not here, this is the Everglades, in the Raptor, it runs straight down along the sides. You can put a heavier duty hitch, which I believe allows you to tow almost, I think, 4,000 pounds in the Bronco Raptor. So not only is it this fun kind of sports truck, it's the one that gives you the higher tow rating as well. And I think that also kind of shows you why uh, you want the four-door, because maybe if you're going to be doing a lot of towing, maybe you're going to be doing a lot of holidaying, you're going to want to have more room in your vehicle to pack your travel stuff. So for these reasons, four-door only for the Raptor. Not that I wouldn't like this two-door Bronco Raptor, that'd be pretty cool, but when you think of the Bronco Raptor's biggest competitions, probably the Wrangler 392, the V8-powered one, that one's also only available, I believe, as a four-door. So there you go. So you kind of see where we're going here. But either way, two very cool trucks. Um, somehow found a way to make the already pretty cool Bronco even cooler. That Raptor is a menace off-road, as you saw. That was amazing. The Everglades is cool in its own way, in kind of its unique way, and just a cool kind of um, cool other option when it comes to time to think of uh, buying a Bronco. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, short drive of these two special edition Ford Broncos. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. If not, no hard feelings, of course. You can follow me on Twitter at Dan the Wheelman and on Instagram at Dan the Wheelman as well. So thanks again for tuning into this video. And until next time, sayonara, folks.